Um, anyway, to defend yourself against these attacks, um, the defenses are actually very lame. I mean, right now, the only reason your website is up is because nobody hates you, or all the people who hate you are stupid. That's it. <laughs> this, is, this is why I thought the gesture was so important. If one guy that hates you is enough to take down your site, this is unacceptable. Nobody can run business and government or anything. No matter what you do, somebody hates you. There's some people out there that hate this talk, believe it or not. And if, they, if any one of you hated this talk and they could shoot me dead, that would be an unacceptable way to run a conference. And that's the way it is on the internet. So um, this is bad. No one person should be able to do anything that would bring down your website. Um, but that's the way we are right now. So if you want to defend yourself, there's mod security, which um, was being talked about earlier today. Uh, mod security does have some protections against layer 7 DOS. Um, the ones I've seen are not that good. They can stop that particular tool, like you can stop a lot of connections from the same IP address, and that will limit the damage of the slow loris attack when done with that Windows-based testing tool, but it would not stop the jester because he runs it through Tor, and they come in from all different addresses. Um, the, uh, you can also um, filter traffic if you can find something similar in it, um, but it's, it's really not all that effective. Uh, better solutions are um, a load balancer. Load balancers will actually save you in a lot of ways. Now, a load balancer, especially a hardware one, sits in front of your web server, takes the requests, and then parcels them out to your server cluster. This one takes that one. So it doesn't even pass any request onto the server at all that isn't complete. If you send half of something, it waits for the other half and doesn't bother the server at all. So I tried that. I set up two Linux machines and attacked it through a load balancer, and that did make it more resistant. However, a sufficient number of these packets would, in fact, overwhelm the load balancer. So you just moved the problem from one device to another, but it was stronger in my tests, and presumably a stronger load balancer could protect your server better than the server software itself. It's the same principle as getting a web application firewall to protect your web application by stopping most of the bad stuff. Um, Akamai protects people against denial of service all the time. And I got a chance to talk to the Akamai guy responsible for this at Layer 7 in our conference in San Francisco in an area. And he told me some very interesting stuff. Now, when Akamai gets a denial of service attack, they work from local caches to your page. So they don't need to get to your server. And they have many, effectively many servers to answer quickly. So it's harder to bring them down. Um, you can also use DNS redirection to move the attack to another place if the attacker has been friendly enough to attack you by IP address. You can reroute your domain name to go to a different server, of course. That's an old trick. And then the attack will keep attacking the old one, but your real customers will go to the new one. Um, and another, um, but the one he told me I'd never thought of was this. Um, when you go to a website, if you go there from clicking onto a link, it passes in the referrer header, this strange mis misspelled field in the HTTP request that tells it where you came from to make it easier for people to determine what search engines are giving them the most value for their advertising or something. So what you do is you put a little page in front that is invisible to the user that contains nothing but JavaScript, and all the JavaScript does is reload this page again. And then when the page, if I go to samsclass.info and I came from Google, I'll see the JavaScript. When I come in the second time, I will be going to samsclass.info from samsclass.info. The referrer will equal the target, which is something that could never happen under normal circumstances. And you only show the real page to people where the referrer equals the target. This is brilliant because you have to use very small resources to handle each request. You just handle one little short page, just a little JavaScript, and the attackers will never get to the real page because the only people that get to the page are people who actually take the response, render it in a browser, and execute the scripts. Real customers trying to see your website. These clowns running attack tools that are sending partial requests and not really caring about the answer are not going to do that, so they will never get anything but your little JavaScript page, which is cheap for you to put out. And um, anyway, that's, that struck me as a very brilliant solution, and that kind of thing would really stop this whole category of attacks in a, in a broad way. That's the kind of good thinking, you know, a broad, a whole new way to go at it that will stop the whole category of attacks rather than just trying to write um, specific rules to pick out each one of the attacks. Anyway, so I thought that was pretty good, um, although I'm not aware of an open source product that will do that for you off the shelf, but it doesn't seem like it would be too hard to roll your own. I haven't done it yet, though. Yeah? Robo, R-O-B-O-O, 
uh, Robo. plugin for Nginx uh, does exactly that. Actually, it does more stuff. It also injects silver light and other challenges to the browser. Ah, Robo. R O B B O. R O B O O. Yeah, it's open source. Let me bring it right up here because that's awesome. This is an Nginx plugin that does that. R O B O O, right? You can also do that with um, uh, if you if you have your like say Apache virtual host set up to do ah. HD access that you can just dump yeah. uh, uh, rerun rules into the HD access to do exactly that. It's like all oh. all desk, all people coming in that are hitting this type of page, half the refer has to be this. Okay, good. This is a layer seven defense. Let me save it right now. It'll be here in my in my links for my students and for me. Good. The, the way around that though is fudging the user, or not user, but fudging the refer. Computer, like dumping it. All right, and you can also do it with HT access. Well, good, good. I got to play with that, and I appreciate the tips. Anyway, um, all right. Let me see if I got anything else here, and then I'm going to kill my machines, um, just like a concert where you burn those instruments at the end. Um, so. Uh, Oh, there's also a counterattack. HD Moore did this. This is kind of fun. People are attacking you, so you just redefine your DNS to point back to their control server. Then they blow themselves away. Of course, your website is down while this happens, and it seems to me like you could argue that it's illegal. Here you are creating a DOS against somebody, um, but they're probably not going to go to the cops, and I don't know if they'd win anyway. It's kind of funny. Like if I had a shield that bounced the bullets back at the guy shooting me, I don't know if that would be legal or not. Anyway, um, but it brings them down, that's for sure. Um, all right, and I put a bunch of references here. Yeah, this, my talk is on my website already at samsclass.info. Let me just point that out. If anybody wants any of this stuff, I got a bunch of links to it all there. And if you want any of my stuff, it's all available for anybody at samsclass.info. And there's the, uh, the PowerPoint for this talk is right there. So now, let me kill these machines. Um, I have 20 minutes left, so I should be able to kill them. All right, now I'm hoping to preserve the attacker, but I didn't want to do it until the... All right, so let's get this sucker back. Quit this. Go here. Control-C. Look at my IP addresses. Okay, I've got a few of these right now. But for this, we're going to let the attack run a little longer. And I need to have task manager there. We can see the CPU percentage. That's the fun thing to watch on this one. All right. And the attack is here. Okay, dot slash flood router. 6 ETH 0. Now, and bring this one again. Let's try top here. Come on, pseudo top. All right. So there's Ubuntu Linux under the same conditions. And um, up here, you should see the CPU. Right now, I have 0.8% of CPU used, really nothing much at all. All right, and here's my Windows 7 machine using 0% of its CPU, so let's run this attack. Now, each one of these dots is 100 router advertisements, and there you go. And looks like it's not going to do anything to me, so I'm going to switch to my backup machine. It's either killed it so much it won't respond at all. Oh, that's what happened. Huh, that's kind of fun. It killed it so bad it can't even show me Task Manager anymore. And notice that the Ubuntu machine is still at 0.5%, and I don't think it ever got that high. Let's take a look at what happened to the Linux machine. Oh, there. Now this thing finally responded. It's at 100%, and it will be at 100% for a good long time. Um, another a company that was testing the devices with RA Guard said that this machine had a backlog of four hours at 100%, and they were using a, a rack-mounted server with eight cores. Um, so that Windows machine is toast. My Ubuntu machine is doing fine here, and if I hit Control-C and uh, look at the IP addresses, you will see why. Ubuntu is not as stupid as Windows. Now, why does Windows try to join 100 networks a second? I'm not really connecting 100 routers per second to my network. How stupid can it be anyway? Ubuntu does not fall for this. It just adds the first 10 or so and then ignores all the rest, like anybody with any sense would do. Um, that's why it doesn't suffer. Now, here's another Windows machine over here, and I thought this one is kind of fun. Another way. Um, let's see if I can get it to project. It's searching for source. Oh, good. So here's another poor little Windows machine here, and you can see its CPU is up at 100%, and if I try to see, yeah, I can't even get this pane to come to the front, I think. Let's see. 
strokes or anything. There it goes. I can do IP config, pipe more, very slowly. And I might possibly be able to see some of the IP addresses that this poor abused machine has gotten. Let's see if it will do anything at all. Okay, I was able to print the first line. We may see some going by here. Anyway, what I wanted to show you here, which is kind of fun, the CPU is at 100%. Now, if I'm able to disable the adapter in network connections, it will stop the attack. I can no longer do it because the machine doesn't respond well enough. But this machine is using a USB attached NIC. So I can do that. Okay, the attack has stopped. The network interface is gone. There is no place to put any of those IP addresses. And yet, it sits here at 100%, and it will be at 100% for a good long time. What is it doing? I would like somebody at Microsoft to explain to me what is happening right now. Why is my machine using its 100% of its CPU, attaching IP addresses to an interface that is not even there, and doing God knows what, group policy and firewall settings, running around like a hamster chasing its tail, um, when there's obviously no benefit to doing this. Anyway, um, I think that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. By the way, it actually got back so you can see some of them. So, all right, good. And I guess, I guess I have a couple of minutes if anybody has any questions. If not, I guess that's it. I got some cards up here if anybody wants them. All my stuff is available on my website. Thank you. I don't see any questions? All right. Okay. Let's try and clean up my mess here. This thing actually responded. Maybe I can shake it down normally. Hey there.